Okay, good morning. Uh, last time we discussed the uh, double sideband with the four carrier modulation and demodulation process. And uh, today we are going to discuss uh, angle modulation. Oh man, I love my notes. Including frequency modulation and uh, phase modulation. We are going to discuss the uh, concept and also uh, the bandwidth. Uh, and we know for double sideband suppressed carrier. Uh, so let's uh, write a review. Uh, double sideband suppressed carrier. If we know the phase band information is empty. Then the modulated signal will be mt times uh, cosine omega ct. Uh, that is uh, the double sideband suppressed carrier. Uh, and double sideband with four carrier or general AM, that will be uh, A plus mt then times uh, cosine omega ct. And uh, for QEM, we transmit two baseband signals at the same time with a, a single frequency. That will be, we have two baseband signals, so M1 T times the cosine omega C T, then plus M2 T times the sine omega C T. And uh, we also discussed the uh, lower side band or upside band. So lower side band or off side band, and we write these two together as a single side band. Single side band. This time domain representation will be m t times cosine omega c t and plus or minus. I believe for lower side band that is a plus. For off side band that will be minus. Is that q? Uh, this one? No, the other one. The, the when you start writing the formula, something of T, right? This one? Yeah, what is it? Phi. Phi. Means uh, oh. it's a uh, time domain signal. Right? Uh, time domain is T, that is just the modulated signal. Okay. okay. And we have uh, MH, which is the Hilbert transform of MT. And uh, 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 time is a sine omega, omega ct. So far, we discussed uh, this many modulation schemes, and today we are going to discuss uh, angle modulation, right? Including FM and including PM, and we are going to discuss PM first, right? And discuss MM second. So what we want is uh, how to implement it, how to uh, implement this, how to understand this in time domain. That means the time domain representation of the modulated signal. Right. Now, let's recall <coughs> for AC signal, uh, for sinusoidal, so for sinusoidal signal, the X, the signal will be equals A times the cosine omega T plus a initial phase. And we know this is amplitude, we already discussed all this part, right? all these modulations. We change the amplitude uh, based on the baseband information. So that's called all this called uh, AM, uh, amplitude modulation. And today we are going to discuss uh, angle modulation. That means we are going to change the angle based on the uh, baseband information. The first one is uh, on the face. So which part is the face? So this is the face. Uh, this is called initial face, and omega t plus theta is the initial face. So we are going to write, uh, uh, in general, phi uh, t will be equals A times the cosine, and this one will be just a zeta i. Eh? Zeta i means uh, the instantaneous phase. 
So the, which means this is a function of time. Uh, this is including omega t and the initial phase. Sometimes we just we can say initial phase equal to zero. That, that's the event. So we can represent this one uh, as, as this. This is called the instant, instantaneous phase. What's the relationship between the instantaneous frequency, instantaneous frequency, and the instantaneous phase? Or we can ask this: If we know the phase, how can we calculate the frequency? Right? We know the phase. Take the differentiation with respect to the time. We are going to get the instantaneous frequency. If we know the phase, which is a function of time, then we take the differentiation with, res with respect to time, we have the instantaneous frequency. Right? So that is the first thing. The second, if we know the instantaneous frequency, if we know the frequency, how to get to the phase? In this case, if the frequency is a constant, I mean, then we just multiply by time. Right? We already know that from uh, uh, line 11. But if this frequency is also a function of time, how to do that? How to calculate the phase? We just do the integration. Right? So we do the integration with respect to uh, from net infinity to t, and this one will be equal to the instantaneous phase. So this, uh, we should know this. Uh, we already know this part. Right? So this review. If we know the phase, we take the differentiation, we get the uh, frequency. If we know the frequency, we do the integration, we get the uh, instantaneous phase. This part. Now, let's discuss uh, PM. PM means uh, the baseband information is in the frequency. Uh, sorry, is in the phase. Right? That's in the T. So, very straightforward method is uh, for. for P function t, we write the pm here. Right? And we, it will be the amplitude is still constant, we do not change the amplitude. And this one here, cosine function, and omega ct does not change, this is from the carrier thing, right? the carrier frequency. And uh, we are going to change this part. The total phase as a linear function of uh, the baseline information, which is uh, mt. So what we do is uh, we can, we just put mt here, and we multiply by a constant. We call this k p. Right? P means phase, and this is called the uh, uh, derivative. Um, Constant right? and multiply. This is just a constant so far. So up to this point, we just think this is just constant. Then multiply by the baseband information. Right? So that is the time domain representation for a phase modulated signal. So that is A times the cosine omega C T plus K P then times the M T. We are, if we are given the baseband information, we are given the carrier amplitude, carrier frequency, then this is the time domain representation for PM, phase modulated. Okay. Any question on that? All right. So we know in this one here, what is the instantaneous phase? The instantaneous phase here will be equal to this, just this one. So omega c t plus k p times m t. So that is the, the phase. What is the frequency? How to calculate the frequency over here? The frequency, we know the phase, we can calculate the frequency. We just take differentiation. So the frequency is uh, this one take the differentiation? Uh, 
Okay, omega c, omega c t. Right? That's the uh, omega c t. So omega c, if this is t, is much common. Right? And we assume omega c is a constant, right? Because that is from the carrier. So this takes differentiation with respect to t. This part will be because of omega c, right? So this one is just constant t. Uh, this is a linear t. Then plus Kp is a constant, so I'll put Kp here, and mt is a function of time. Then the differentiation is just the mt take the differentiation. And we can write dm dt, or we can just put a dot on the top, means differentiation, first order differentiation. Right? So what we have done here is uh, if we are given the baseband information and the carrier information, then we can write out the PM modulated signal like this. And in this modulated signal, the instantaneous phase is only this part, uh, inside the, uh, the parenthesis. And the instantaneous frequency will be equal to this. You can see it is a constant from the carrier signal then times, then plus a constant, then multiply by the first order differentiation of the baseband signal. Right? So that's it. That is the PM. The next one is uh, FM. In FM, as, look at this. In PM, the phase change linearly with, with, uh, with uh, this baseband signal. Right? So this one increases, we just multiply by a constant. So this the phase changes with the baseband. So similarly, in FM, the information of the baseband will be in the frequency. So what we do is just instantaneous frequency will be equal to the original carrier frequency, then with a part, a constant, here we call KF, uh, F means this F here, then multiply by the baseband information, the baseband signal. So look at it here. The instantaneous frequency change linearly with the baseband information. So that's why we call this FM. And the difference between FM and PM is this. The phase change linearly with the baseband signal. In FM, the frequency change linearly with the baseband uh, see. So that's the only difference, right? Uh, with the instantaneous frequency, what we want to write out is the time domain modulated signal. So time domain modulated signal is a V F M. That one equals A again. The M two is constant. Times the cosine omega C T. All this part here must be the instantaneous uh, phase. We know the instantaneous frequency. So what is in this part? Huh? This part, okay, let, let me write this first. Huh? So what is inside here supposed to be a instantaneous phase? Then how to calculate this one? We know the instantaneous frequency. How to calculate the instantaneous phase? Right? Now we go back to here. We know the frequency, and we want to know the phase. So the only thing we need to do is just the integration. Alright, integration. Alright, so that means I write here instantaneous phase equals, which also is a function of time, will be equals uh, this one to the integration. Right? So we do this one, integration. This is a constant. Constant integration is just the omega c times t. And this is a constant, so this constant, I can move this one outside. Then the integration is only applied to this mt, which is a function of time. So here, this integration is uh, a long time, but uh, with respect to time. So this is time, and so we said from negative infinity to the present time, this t is this. And we can write mt dt. But keep in mind, this t and this t are the same because these are integration variables. But this t and this t are different. This t is time, 
And this t is an uh, in integration variable, this book. So sometimes it's confusing to write like this. Right? Instead, we want to write this t with something else. Right? This does not change anything, right? Because this is just an integration variable. So you can write the call, or as in our slide, we can use it just the r. Right? So r represented the integration variable. So here, we we'll get this one. So this is the instantaneous bit. Right? Now, once we know this instantaneous phase, we can just write here. What is the time domain FM moderated signal? That will be A cosine this part. We just copy all this thing at this part. So omega C T plus KF, then integration connecting infinity to T and M R for T R. Okay, so that's it. Now we summarize here. So for FM signal, that is a constant A, I compare all this, look, all this amplitude change with the baseband, but here, these two do not change, because the baseband information is in the phase here, and is in the frequency here, right? So this one will be cosine omega ct plus some constant, eh? f, that is called the deviation uh, sensitivity, and then times integration from negative infinity to t, m alpha and t r. These two formulas give us, if we know the carrier signal, if we know the baseband signal, then we can easily write out the modulated signal in time domain for both the PM and FM. Okay? Uh, we are going to have an example right? So this. Assume Assume the carrier signal is uh, 10 times the cosine 10 to the 6 t. And we also assume baseband information 1 equals uh, 3 times the sine 300, 3000 t. And we also assume the second baseband signal equals uh, equals 10 times the cosine 2000 t, but this only eh, applies when t is greater than zero. Eh? When t is less than zero, we, we think we don't have any signal like this. Eh? These three information is OK, yes? Does this say 30 cosine t? This one? Uh, this? Is it in real? This one, 10. No, in the middle. In the middle, this one? Go over to the right. To the right. Yeah, it's 3,000. Right. 3, 0, 0, 0 times t. This one is 2,000. 2,000 t. Uh, maybe we want to put the parentheses here. Huh? This is clear? Huh? This is example. We know the carrier signal. We know two baseband signals. We want one to be modulated in phase, another one modulated in frequency. So that's why I give you two. Okay? Uh, next one. What I want is just the time domain representation for, for PM and for AM, uh, for FM. For M1, we want uh, PM. Okay? I just put here. You don't need to write this one. Just, you know. This one, we want this one to be a frequency modulated. Use this one to phase modulate this, use this one to frequency modulate this. That's our requirement. And what is then, what is the time domain PM and time domain PM modulated signal? What's this? Can you try? What's the first one? A. A. What is A? A 
Okay, okay we can, if you want this, okay, we let's copy the formula, okay? Yeah? So A cosine omega C T plus K T and times M one T, eh? Oh, I forget to uh, tell you the K F, uh, K P and K F. Okay, so K P here equals uh, says two. Two radians per voltage. And for this one, it says K F. Uh, right here. K F equals, uh, uh, equals three. Radians per second per volt. Uh, so K P equals two. Uh, K F equals three. It's not that clear, right? So you so all these, these are sensitivities we, we need to know, right? So what is this? What is A? It's constant. What constant? Which one? T is both of them. T? T, right? That is the amplitude of the carrier signal, which is here. And uh, then cosine omega C T. What is this? Omega C is the angular frequency of the carrier signal. So it is 10 raised to the 6. 10 to the 6, right? Good. 10 to the 6 with a T here. Then plus 2. 2, right? Given 2 times MT. Yeah, and so M1T. Uh, we just want to use uh, this one to modulate uh, this one. So M1 equals what? M1 T equals this one, right? This one times the uh, KP times 2. So equals what? So 6, six line. sine function yeah. and uh, 3000 3, T. Uh, that's it. What about the radiance per volt? Do you want to need this stuff? This one? Do you want to need it? This is the unit. I'm saying, do we need it? Yeah, because this one, the, the unit of this one is the group. Is the what would be the unit at the end? This one? No, other other signal. This, this what do you mean other signal? Yeah, the, the one we just did. What we put at the end of the whole thing. This one is the unit. I'm saying, what are we gonna put at the end? You don't need to put the unit because this one gives you the what is the unit of this one? The voltage. This one is the voltage, right? Yeah. This is the volt. volt. Then you multiply by this KP. This is the radiance per volt. Then you so multiply volt. So radius. volt volt cancel. You have radian. radian. What is the radian? Radian is just a degree. Yeah. Right. So that one is inside the ten to the six times t. That is a, a radian. This is also radian. Right? Radian and degree can be converted. Right. So this one is in the right unit. So okay. you don't need right because this is after the cosine. Yes. Okay. So we do the six. This is. Yes. This six equals KP times m one. KP is two. M1 is this one. Okay. So 2 times 3 cos uh, sine function, so that's 6. This one. Yeah, that one is easy. Do the other. Let me see that one. Okay? Yeah. This one is easy, right? Yeah, that's The easy. reason is uh, because of the baseband information is uh, in the phase. So we just copy this. The next one is still it's not that difficult. It's still, same thing, just we need an extra step, which is the integration. So KP is always no, no, this one is constant. We give, are giving you this one. In this example, it's okay. true. It can be anything. Huh? When you design a communication system, you can choose this KP because it's constant. Huh? That's called give, give us the deviation sensitivity. For example, look, if this one is large, huh? if you have a small signal, then your face deviation will change, will change a lot. Right? Because this one, look here. This is KP times this one. If your signal is very small, but your KP is large, even for a small signal, this change in degrees in the in the angle will be large. Okay? So this this. Right. Next one is F P F M time domain modulated signal equals. If I want to, okay. So I don't have enough space. I don't copy this formula. Right? If you want, you, you should copy this formula here. Right? You just look at that formula, then write out the the solution. A, what is A here? A is the same thing. Ten. Same thing, 10. Alright, 10 times uh, cosine. Yep. What, what else? 
Same thing. Omega C times T. So 10 to the 6 times T. Then plus, plus what? KF. What is KF? KF equals 3. Good? Now this part. Eh? You may don't like this one, but I said this one is as, as easy as this one. We just do an integration. So integration, I put here. From uh, we said this signal is the start from uh, ut from zero, so we do not want to do this one from a negative infinity. So we just start from the zero, right? So that's why from zero. When you say it start at zero, because this signal only start ut. Ut means uh, the signal only start from zero. Okay. Right. I got you. If you have taken 323, you know that, huh? That's ut is the unit step function. Means just the switch. Yeah. Only equals one only when t greater than zero. And equals zero before zero, right? So that means this signal only occurred after zero. Before that, nothing. So negative infinity, you don't need to care about it because before that everything is nothing. Right? So we just start from and m alpha, m2 alpha. So that's why equals uh, 10 times the cosine 2000 t. t. We replace t with the integration variable r, right? You, you can write this t as we said, t v t. But this t, these two t are the same. But these two are different than this one. What is this t? This is time. Uh, this t is equal to this t. Yeah. What is this t? What is this t? Like the derivative. They just in the derivative. So you can write this one as x, right? For example, here, x squared dx uh, from 0 to t. Uh, and uh, y squared dy from 0 to t. What's the difference between these two results? They are the same, right? So in this one, it was uh, 1 third cube uh, from 0 to t. So this gives us a t cube over 3. What's this? This is still equals y cubed over 3 and from 0 to t. Still give us a t cubed over 3. So this y here, this x here are just uh, integration variable. You can change to anything. So to avoid the confusion, this okay, t, this t, this t, and there's another t here. We have four t's. They are different. This t and this t are the same, means time. This t and this t are different. So that's why in the formula, we don't want to confuse you, right? T, we instead we use R. Uh, you can use a beta, you can use a anything. Uh, you can use a tau, uh, like this, tau, tau. Or you can use X. Make sense? Right? So we use X, right? If you like. Alright, so what is this? This one, 10. Same function integration give us a uh, cosine function integration give us a same function, right? And so 2000 x, and we need to move, move this 2000 on the bottom at the front. And then here there's 10. Right? Then this one from 0 to t. 0 sine 0 equals 0, so this one is gone. So we just change this one to t. So this is the result for this integration. Make sense? Then we need to multiply by three. That is the sensitivity. Okay? So that's why here will be 30 on the top, multiply by this three. So 30 divided by this one. Okay, so I can just divide 0 0.015. That's 30 divided by 2000. And with this sign uh, function and two then t. I erase this one, alright? So you can do this integration. Uh, prerequisite for here is the math 169. So you know how to do this integration. Okay. Any questions? Everything good? Uh, we are given the carrier, we are given the baseband, so you can write out the time domain fm and pm. PM is easy, just multiply by the sensitivity. FM, you need to do an integration. Then times the sensitivity. Okay?
Any further questions? This is our summary, right? Eh? Submission. So you need better to write this stuff, eh? So keep this in mind. So everything starts from here. The implementation, eh? the theories. Okay, next one, we are going to discuss the bandwidth of uh, angle uh, modulative signal. Uh, bandwidth of uh, angle modulative signal. All right, let's uh, review. What's the band? Suppose the base band has a bandwidth of B. Uh, the baseband. Baseband information, uh, uh, small mt, uh, that is the bandwidth is a capital B. Like my voice is from 0 to 20k, right? So B is uh, 20k. What is the bandwidth of uh, this one? Double, so that is 2B. What is uh, this one? Double. Still double, right? What's the difference between these two? Oh. This one, suppress carrier, that means uh, no carrier signal. Look at this one. Do we have cosine omega CT? Separate. Do we have that one? No, we no. don't. Because this one is already multiplied, shifted to the we right or left, right? In the omega CD, we don't have that information. How about this one? Yes, we do have this one. See, this is A times cosine omega CT. This is the baseband information. So the only difference between these two is uh, we have this uh, cosine omega CT here. This one, we don't have. Make sense? QEM. What's the bandwidth of QEM? 4, 1, <coughs> that is still AM. See, look at this one. This one is the same as this one, right? So this part is still 2B. What's this? That. The difference between thing and the cosine is just 90 degree phase shift, which is constant. So it does not change the spectrum. So this one is still 2B. Right? So 2B, 2B. Now 2B, 2B are, the, are at the same place. Yes, both the center of the at plus or minus the omega c. So these two actually overlap. So 2b. So 2b plus 2b still equals 2b. Because they, are, they overlap. Right? So this one is still 2b. This one. Single side band. 1b, single. Right? So that is b. And no matter LSB or USB, both. Uh, another one. It's VSB, that is like 1.25 up to 1.33, something so greater than B, but less than 2B, right? So we ignore that. Now, we are going to discuss the bandwidth for this one. Infinite. Infinite. Right? So let's guess. You have a car, you have a radio. You listen to AM, you listen to FM. You listen to FM for music, most probably, right? You listen to AM for for talk show or something, or for talk. There's a reason. Right? Which one has a higher frequency? Yeah. FM. FM is like, for example, 90 some meg or between. It's uh, from a, anyone knows? 80 to 100, 108 meg, right? How about the AM? 535 K to 6. 0, 2, K, so 1.6 meg. The maximum is just 1.6, mm -hmm. but the lowest for FM is 80 something. Right. So you can see it's totally different. Why? Right? Right. Because the AM, the bandwidth is small. Right? You don't need that high frequency. You don't need to even go to, for example, FM, let alone like micro or optical. You don't need that high. For FM and PM, right? somebody else mentioned infinite. Uh, infinite, that's only th theoretically correct. Uh, right. But in, in real life, you cannot have infinite bandwidth, right? Okay. So, but anyway, 
That is true in theory. Uh, in reality, the bandwidth is very large. Right? So now we are going to see how to derive this one. How large? Uh, we mentioned the Euler's identity at the very beginning, right? So we know cosine function, cosine omega t, like this, can be represented by the real part, right? We have a here, so m to the equals y or not. Right? The real part of uh, exponential e to the j omega t. This. The real part of this, we are just equal to this. Hmm? Uh, we are going to write uh, this one later time today, all in terms of this one. Why? Because this, we like this exponential. Right? The differentiation is easy, right? What's the differentiation of ET? E -T. Still ET, right? Differentiation of this, still equals ET. What is the differentiation for cosine function? Right? That is negative sine function, right? And what is the sine? differentiation, right? That's the cosine. So you can see, we are not easy. We like this one, right? How is it twice? Still the same, right? So that's why we want to use the exponential instead of the cosine same functions, right? So uh, we, are, we discuss uh, here, uh, let me see which example we use to discuss, huh? fm or pn. Uh, we use, uh, okay, in this, here we use uh, fm. Uh, look at this. This is a times a, a plus k t times this one. This one is plus a k f times integration. What? What's the significance of this difference? Not that significant, right? So if you give me an m, I just pass this one through an integrator thing. I just it's like this. That's why these two are combined together. It's called angle modulation. Yeah, because they are very closely related. Right? So now I will write this part as uh, uh, all this part, and this one, or this one, both, no matter this case or this case, I write this one as function t, as a, a t. Because they both are function of time, right? So I just write this one. For simplicity, I don't want to re rewrite all this every time, so I just use this. A T to represent. And in case of F M, this one. A M, uh, P M, this one. Okay, now the F M signal. Instead of uh, using this cosine function, I will use this uh, Euler's identity. This is exponential. So that's why we A times e to the power of. Uh, J omega C T then plus a function T. There's a real part, real, in the front, right? I don't write this yet, I just let you think. There must be a real in this front, right? Like, like this one. Make sense? The real part of this one will be equal to this field. Make sense? So every time we do this, when we only consider the real part, again, it's too trouble. I don't want to write all these things. So instead, I will make a new function, and just like this. And later time, I just pick the real part of this, and then that is what we want. Right? So later time, I only deal with this one. Instead, each time you write the real, make a lot of mess. Here. So I just treat this one. But at the last step, I just pick the real part then this is what we want, right? So now look at this one. That is, we want to find out the bandwidth of this signal, or of this signal, which means we want to find out the bandwidth of this signal, the real part. It's good? All this is just for easy writing here, right? Now we need to use a, a, a there's a, Series theory. You know this from uh, KL2 or somewhere, right? This one, uh, we make some assumption. We assume this one is very, very small, right? smaller than one. So it is very, very small. 
Okay. So this uh, I will rewrite this one. The A e to the J omega C T times E to the J K F A. Okay, that's K F uh, K F or K F or K P, just that's K. Uh, this A is only only this part, right? So only the integration. So I need to put a K at the, at the front. These two add up together on the, uh, on the power, so it will be separate like this, right? E to the x plus y equals e to the x times e to the y. So that's right, this one, we can do nothing here. That is the carrier signal. So we need to do this one. Suppose this one is very, very small. So kf times at is very, very small. So now consider the series. So e to the x, when x is very, very small. Right? For example, if x is equal to 0, what is this? Equals 1, perfect. If x is not that small, not equals one, uh, equals 0, but it's very close to, to 1, I want a better approximation. For example, e to the 0 0.0001. How large is this? Right? I just add an x. That means e to this one just uh, 1 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Uh, If x is small, this is the, called a zeroth order approximation, first order approximation. How about I want more accuracy? All right, now you need to add squared then 2 to the factor. How about I want more? All right, cubed then 3 factor. So you can have add a lot of terms, but you can see because x is very very small, all these following terms are getting smaller and smaller. Right? This one equals uh, 0 0.0001. This one squared that means equals 0 0.0000001, uh, then divided by two, and this one even smaller. Right? So but anyway, this one is uh, is what you want. Yes, I will write everything here. So I keep this a here. Uh, e to the j omega c, then this part will be 1 plus uh, j k f a t, that is 1 plus x, right? Then plus uh, x square, x square is j k f a t squared over 2 factorial. 2 factorial equals 2, right? Then plus another term is uh, J K F A T cubed then over three factorial, which equals six, and we have a lot of terms add up together. Right? Those are the approximations. Any questions? So, so that's when you put down there. Why can't you read like J K? This one J K F A T all the same thing, but this okay. is square. This is cube. Divide by three factorial, which equals six. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine the next time it will be JK okay, A fourth divided by twenty-four. So, okay. Is it good? This one has a hat here, means this is a, has a real part and an imaginary part. Okay. Okay. The next term, the next step is a, okay. This one is our interest. Eh? Without the head. Without head means I don't only take the, the real part of this one. So the real part will be e to the j omega c t times 1 plus, you take only the real part. Eh? The real part, okay, the first term is, uh, uh, okay. I also multiply this one inside. I only summarize, uh, summarize this. So this one will be a times. So then omega c t minus k f a times sine omega c t then minus k f squared a squared over 2 then times cosine omega c t then plus k f cubed a cubed and over 6 then times sine omega c t and we have infinite terms. These are the real FM signal. We only take the real part of this part. Okay. 
the, the imaginary part is gone. It's good? So now actually this one is this. We can write this part as this one. And all these are just the auxiliary steps. Which now they finish there. They can, we can't just ignore them. So this one, fm equals all this. We want to find the bandwidth of this, which is not easy. We don't know. Right? Somebody mentions the infinity. I want to know if that is true. Right? But this one can be rewritten as this one. So let's see what's the bandwidth over here. The first term, this constant, you don't need to consider. Constant does not change the bandwidth. This one here, so the bandwidth of this will be equal to just this zero. This is the omega c. So the bandwidth for this part is just a spike. Uh, singular frequency at omega c. It's good. This one, k a times a sine function. A, what is a? A is the integration of a, of the baseband you know, signal here. The integration is linear. We know that from 323, right? A linear integrator, that means we do not change the bandwidth. The bandwidth is still the same. So the bandwidth of m integration still is m, is capital M, that means still the b. That's the time the same function. From a Laplace transform, we know this one will be move this uh, shift, this spectrum uh, to be centered at plus and minus omega c. So the spectrum for this part will be here, and this negative omega c here, like this. And this spike uh, is because of this term, and this second term gives us this one. Sure, we have a, another copy on this side, but they are exactly the same. Does that make sense? OK, now look at this one here. This is the third term. This one is still centered at plus minus omega c. So this is just the spectrum of this, but at this one here. Now again, in 323, we mentioned this is a square. Square is nonlinear, right? Uh, square actually double the bandwidth. So A is the same as this M means B. Now, this A squared means we have a 2B. Right? So the bandwidth here will be like this. Still the same, but the bandwidth uh, double. Uh, centered to omega C and negative omega C. But the amplitude is reduced. Why? Because Kf is very small and the 2 is large. So this Coefficient is small, so this y is small. Make sense? Right. How about the next term? Next term, same thing here, still centered at the omega c, negative omega c, but this one q, that means the bandwidth equals 3b. Right. So it is even wider, like this, but the amplitude is even smaller. Now we can imagine the next term will be this, next term will be this. Right. So what's the bandwidth? For this one, singular frequency, bandwidth equals zero. For this one, bandwidth equals this b, this b is 2b. Because this one is a double side band separate as the carrier. This one here is double side band with four carrier. So that is 2b. How about this one? We have another one, 4b. How about the next one? Right? We have 6b. So you can imagine. We have infinite terms here. What's the bandwidth? Infinity. infinity. All those. So yes, the bandwidth equals infinity. So that's very, very bad. That means you cannot make any communication system to transmit FM signal without any distortion, because you need infinite bandwidth. No one can make a system that has infinite bandwidth. So that is very bad. The good thing is you can see it's 6, huh? next one is 24, next one is uh, 120, next one is 720, then like this, and also this KF is smaller, smaller, smaller. So you can see all these amplitudes are smaller. So after several terms, we don't need to care about this one because this amplitude are too small compared to the first several terms. So we can approximate. Right? So yes, the approximation bandwidth is called the Carson's rule. Right? Carson's rule, the bandwidth of FM or PM 
e cos. Uh, this is for FM and PM is the same, right? They are both angle modulations. So FM or PM, the bandwidth for this equals uh, eh, 2B, because you see, this is 2B, 4B, so every is just uh, multiple of 2B. So 2B times 1, why times 1? Because this one definitely is clear, this one is important. This is the first term that we have based the information from the baseband. So we need to have this term. So that's why there's one here. Right? And then the others can be simplified, approximated. And this one will be equals a plus a beta. Right? Beta is just a number. Right? It's called a, uh, the beta, I believe it's called a deviation ratio. So what is beta? Right? The beta is defined by the frequency deviation divided by B. What is the frequency deviation? Frequency deviation, look at this one. Uh, we just uh, ignore, uh, erase at this part. Right? So look here. What is the frequency for, for this one here? The frequency, this one is the phase, right? right. The frequency is the, take, this, take the differentiation. So the, the frequency for this FM is, so the frequency for FM is, this one, take differentiation as T will be gone, so that's omega C. Then, plus, this KF is constant here. This is a differentiation, integration, then differentiation, we get this one back, right? So that's the M T. Right? So that is the instantaneous frequency of this FM signal. The original carrier signal, the frequency equals this. Now we have a baseband. So that means your carrier frequency will deviate away from this frequency. It can be positive, it can be negative. So that means change with respect to this omega C. And this is called the frequency deviation. Does this make sense? We use our baseband information to change the frequency of your carrier signal. Right? And your frequency will up and down. And there's a difference between this. The difference between the instantaneous frequency with the original carrier frequency. So it's called, this is called a frequency deviation or frequency difference. So this is frequency deviation. And this is called delta F. That's delta F is the change of the frequency. Okay, that's fine. Right? <coughs> Does that make sense? Uh, where's the example? All right, look at here. The example. What is the frequency deviation here? Okay, for frequency deviation, first of all, we need to find the instantaneous frequency. Then we can find the frequency deviation, right? Frequency deviation means just the difference. So you need to find the new frequency, then you min minus the original one, you get the deviation. All right. This one takes differentiation. So we get a 10 to the 6, this t is gone, right? Then plus this one times this 2000, so that is the 30, uh, cosine 2000 t. Right? So that is the instantaneous frequency of this model uh, FM signal. Make sense? We take the differentiation from the instantaneous phase, we get this instantaneous frequency. What is the frequency deviation? The original frequency is this one. Yes? Now, this part plus 30 times the cosine function. Cosine, the maximum is 1, the minimum is a negative 1, right? So this means this part is a plus minus a 30. Does it make sense? So the modulated signal is a frequency we are up and down from a center at 10 to the 6, and the maximum is 10 to the 6 plus 30. The minimum is 10 to the 6 minus 30. So this frequency will change between this one. So this part, the 30, is the frequency deviation. Does it make sense? All right. So this is the frequency deviation, right? 
how to find the frequency deviation from the definition. Okay. The new frequency, the instantaneous frequency minus the the original bandwidth, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the original uh, frequency of the carrier signal. So that is the frequency deviation. Then what is B here? What is B in this example? B is, B is the baseband spectrum here. So in this one, look, this one is the MT, right? So the baseband equals, uh, is B equals 2000. That is the omega, that's the frequency of this one, right? right? So B here equals 2000 radians per second. Any question on this? Give me one minute to think about this awesome question. Eh? We need to be very clear about the concept, otherwise you cannot do the problem. Eh? Uh, I'm guess you think, okay, this one looks not that easy, but when you do the homework, it looks like not everybody did perfectly. Eh? I know some of you did very good, eh? so like uh, 38 out of 40. But someone is not that. So first of all, we need to understand the concept here. So my suggestion is uh, after the class, you need to review the lecture notes and eh? watch the, the recordings. So up there, where, where we were going earlier. Uh, here, this example? Not to the left. Oh, uh, this one here. The, yeah, up there. So okay. is that cosine uh, omega t minus? This one? Yeah. Cosine omega c t. Yeah, cosine omega ct minus, minus kf okay. times a. Yes, okay. Then this is sine omega ct. Okay. And then after that, after that is minus kf squared e squared okay. over 2 factorial or 2. 2 factorial equals 2. Right? Then times the cosine omega ct. Okay, so why is why are there some negatives? Oh, some minus. A negative a is, look at this one. <laughs> this is a j here, right? J is with J KF of A to the power of N. N equals 1, 2, 3, 4. So if this N equals 1, it will be J. So that will be uh, just negative J. Right? If there's not a J here, so that is give you the real part, but that's negative. But if you say this is a 2, that will be negative 1. Right? Just for negative 1. Negative 1 times this one, okay, that's give us an imaginary part, so we throw away that one. But if this one equals 3, 3, this one here, j to the 3 will be equals negative j. Negative j times this j, that's give us a positive one. So that's why this signs, right? negative, uh, uh, this negative, positive, negative, positive, this is supposed to be a, uh, a chain. Right? So mine is negative, and the next one must be positive. Negative positive. Okay, any further questions on this? Uh, now you imagine like this. I'll give you a baseband signal. I'll give you a carrier, all the necessary information. Can you write out the FM or PM modulated signal? Yeah. Example like uh, we just read uh, this one, right? Yeah, yeah. You can write this, right? Now I ask you, what you already know this, right? So how about if I give you this? Suppose I give you this. I ask you, what is the instantaneous phase in here? Instantaneous phase means the phase as a function of time. So this one is, right? Phase is just the after the cosine something. All these are called phase. Right? And in this case, these are the phase. Also again, what is the instantaneous frequency? Right? You just take the differentiation of this instantaneous phase, you get the instantaneous frequency. Right? I mean ask again, 
What is the frequency deviation? You have this uh, instantaneous phase. Changes with time. Right? It's a function of time. But uh, it changes with the original carrier signal. Because uh, if we don't have this baseband information, this carrier frequency is constant. So always uh, 10 to the uh, 10 to the 6. Yes. So always this one. If we don't have this M, then this one is constant. Just ideal sign sort of function. Because we have this C information here, this frequency will change. Uh, this change, this one is the change. So this is called a frequency deviation. Does that make sense? So you can calculate delta F. And delta F, this one can be large, can be small. Uh, depends on two factors. One is a K. The other one is the amplitude of F. Because how we get this 30? We use KP or KF times the amplitude of this one. So this here depends on this. Right? And, but anyway, in the baseband information, we have a frequency here. In this example, this one equals 3,000. This example equals 2,000. So we have a B here. Then the frequency deviation delta F over B gives us the beta. It's called deviation index. Uh, that is this beta. Once you know the beta, you add 1 to it, then you multiply to B. Again, what is B? B is the bandwidth of your original baseband information. So that is the approximate bandwidth of the FM or PLC. Right? So in this example, we may just pick this part. Huh? Depending on how, how large your beta. If your beta is large, then this one is wider. If beta is small, then this one is okay. Is it small? We, well, uh, all others we just ignore. Can we do another example of getting the bandwidth of the FM signal? This one? Well, just like getting the bandwidth of the FM signal. FM signal, for, for this example, okay? So the frequency deviation is 30, right? The delta F equals 30. Because, see, this one. Uh, let me write somewhere. Okay, right. So use this one as an example here. The delta F. So the delta here, okay. so omega, omega i instantaneous frequency equals 10 to the 6 plus uh, 30 times uh, cosine 2000t. This is omega. The unit is radians per second. The word the b is in terms of hertz, huh? but we can use the radians per second. This one is also radians per second. So delta F, but now we cannot use delta F, right? F means hertz, so we need to use delta omega. Does it make sense to you? Right? So why you want the delta omega instead of F? Because F is in hertz, this one we prefer to use it. Or if you like, we can still use delta F. Okay? Delta F because what is the change in the radians per second here? That's the maximum because 30, right? Because the maximum of cosine is equals 1. So that is 30. But you need to divide it by 2 pi. Does it make sense? Why divide by 2 pi? Because we are looking for delta F. What is this 30? This 30 is delta omega. Angular frequency. Make sense? This is uh, omega here, right? But we are looking for this one. So this one gives us some hertz. Right? It's 6, so less than 5 hertz. What is B? The baseband information here is 20,000. So can, can I just write 20,000? Is that correct? This is the radians, right? Radian per second, right? So we need to divide by 2 pi also. Yes? Because this one, frequency equals 2,000, uh, that is not the F, that is the omega. Omega equals 2 pi times F. We are looking for F, we are given omega, so you need to divide it by 2 pi. Right? So that's why I divide this one. Is that negative 2 pi or is it B? Uh, uh, this one. No, okay. That's the, all this uh, is digital scale, okay? So that's divided by 2 pi. Eh? 
So now, theorem half equals this, P is this. That means that for this baseband spectrum, the frequency deviation is just like, like 5 hertz. All right, so what is beta? Beta here is uh, delta f over b. So this one over this. Yeah. That's why I said okay, you don't need to divide by 2 pi because we both need to divide this one. So we're just in 30 yeah. over 2000. So that's 0.015. I know this. Hmm? Yeah, you know this. How do you know with 30 over 2,000? This one is a 30, this one is a 2,000. No, I'm saying how do you know the answer? You calculate. You calculate it in your head. Divided by zero, so that is 200, this is one, so that is a, like 1.5%. One per, so you have a 3 over 200, so that means you have 1.5 for every 100, so that's 1.5%. Right? So that's 0 0.015. Now the bandwidth, the bandwidth for this FM equals 2B. What is 2B? 2 times B here equals uh, 2000 over 2 pi. You need to do this, right? We want it in hertz. This one, then times 1 plus uh, beta, this one 0 0.2. Okay. What is this? It's 200, 200 is gone. So this is about 3, so that's about. Uh, you need to use a calculator, you give me the <coughs> But we approximate, this one is like a close to 700, and this one is 1 plus 0 0.15. Okay, so that is like a, what, 117. So you can see it's very... In this case, because of the deviation index is very small, so this extra part is small, just 1.5%. But some, how the other examples, and this one may be large, for example, if I give you this K, P, KF, instead of 3, I'll give you 300. Uh, this one will be much larger. Right? So that depends on the index or sensitivity. Uh, this is for FM. For PM, uh, the formulas are given in the slide with some differentiation. You don't need to remember this one, but. Uh, my suggestion is you start from the definition. Huh? You know what we are doing. Frequency deviation, you just find the instantaneous frequency, no matter what. Sometimes you need to take the differentiation, sometimes you don't need to. Then divide it by the bandwidth, then you get beta. Huh? L to 1, then times 2b, that is the... You may ask, how good is this approximation? Well, okay, nine, more than 95% of the power will be within this bandwidth. So the, the, the diagram we just erased like this, right? So this one here, we have this, we have this, we have this, we have this. Theoretically, the bandwidth is infinite, but we approximate only with this one. Right? Good news is 95% uh, of the total energy will be within this uh, approximation. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Now, let's go back to reality. What is your bandwidth, your FM radio, each channel? Can you guess? Which channel do you listen to? 95.7. 95 95.7. What's the next channel? 95.5. Okay, that's low. Okay, 95.5. 95.7. So, how large is in between? 0 0.2. 0 0.2 meg. That means 200k. Right. 200k, each one get 100k, but you have a double side, so the bandwidth is about 200k. The band gap between each channel is about 200k. Right? So that means this bandwidth must be less than this 200k. If it's more than this one, then you have overlap between channels. Right. So in re real life, if you want to set up an FM station, Eh? Your bandwidth must be less than 200k, so you can stay within inside your band. I'm here, 200. You're here, 200. It must be less than 200, so we can still have some gap in between. Does so this make sense? Let's give you an approximation. I don't know exactly how large it is, but it must be less than 200k. Eh? Okay, uh, how, how about the AM? What channel? Uh, do you listen? <laughs> uh? 
Right? You do not understand. Right? So now you can still use the same method to determine the gap. Right? This channel, especially the digital tuner. Right? If you the analog, that won't work. <laughs> the digital. This one, the next one, okay, you have something, then you, you can see the difference. So what about ham radio? Ham radio, they use a single side band. That's what I right? They do not give you that high quality because. Yeah. Right? So they give you usually you use a lower side band. So it's a, and the frequency is low, it's like a 10 meg or 30 meg, so right. it's user. It's about proximity, right? Yeah, radio is about the equation. Okay, now we have still have another example which is important for your homework. Eh? Uh, when the homework do? Monday. You look at the website. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have good news to announce uh, for you later. Eh? Yeah, Okay, so now we have another example. So we see the bandwidth looks like this, right? So we know this one. The question is how to find this, uh, I said the amplitude of here is smaller and smaller. So sometimes you may interest, I want to know the power here for each band. Question? I had a question actually about the homework due date. Not when it was due, because you just explained that, but where does it say when? It's just the... The, 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 we use the unit, today is unit 5, right? If you look at this one, next one is unit 6, that means next time we meet, I don't know where, when. Huh? Okay, so that if the homework is due at that time is before the class. Okay. You look at the website, it's, it should be very clear. Right? Because sometimes we need to skip class, so we cannot tell you a date. Remember at the beginning, we canceled the class several times because of the labor day, because of the thunderstorm, so I need to change the date. I asked you to submit it today, but actually we haven't covered the content yet, so I need to extend, extend. So next time I will just, okay, once we covered this one, like this. This unit one here, okay, you do homework uh, unit two or unit three. Okay, before this unit three, you need to submit homework for this one. If we have a lot of skips here, then you have a long time to do this, but you still need to submit next one. Just like Okay? okay? I can explain later. Okay. Alright, so now what we want to do is I really want to know what the, uh, the amplitude is. So I want to know this one, what is the power of this? What is the power of this? We said it's a smaller and smaller based on this uh, uh, coefficient. So how small is that? We have interest on this. Right. Uh, to be frank, it's not easy to calculate this. Right? So we can use only very simple examples to give us the idea how we treat this kind of problem. So assume A equals, uh, equals 10 uh, and the MF uh, that is called a modulation index. Uh, MF is uh, delta F over, over, over B. Uh, modulation index equals 3. And we would like to know Suppose the baseband is just the size of soil function, just a cotine function. Okay? So if we draw this, this is the omega C here. So this is the omega C, the first one. The next one will won't be like this, because this is a continuous spectrum, right? So I said this one baseband is a cotine function, MT is a cotine function, so it will be just like this. Again, okay, this baseband is a cotine function, a singular frequency. So no longer a continuous spectrum, it is just a spike like this. So this is the first one. Okay, the next one like this, then the next one like this. Okay, so I make this a little bit higher, okay, so it's easy to see this. Okay, so what I want, I want to determine how large, how large is this? How large is this? How large is this? How large is this? Then, where should I stop? Should I have more or, or not? So how many? Frequencies should I choose based on this car center rule? All these coefficients are determined by Bessel function. I don't want to bother you with this. Right? Uh, good news is in the textbook, they give us table. All these coefficients are given, are tabulated in, in the textbook. Right? Uh, we need to know the, the table is given based on the MF. So you look at the MF, then you find that column. Right? And uh, for this one, for A equals 10, for MF equals 3. And this one, J0, 
this is the first term, J0, and this J03 is a function of this MF. This one is J negative 1, 3, this one is J1, 3, but these two are the same. A negative 1 and positive 1 they are the same. This one is J2, uh, negative 2, 3. This one is J positive 2, 3. Again, they are the same. Right. And you look at the modulation index. This one you determine. In this example, uh, we need a, so the, it's called a five significant coefficient. Uh, I believe we have five. So, five significant uh, frequencies, coefficients, no matter what you call this, you know what we are talking about. We need only five. So, one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, all others we just ignore. Why? Because it's too small based on this, this rule. Here only give us the approximation of the bandwidth. But in this example, I want to know within the bandwidth, how large is each power? For example, you want to set up the system, you want to transmit the power, so you need to know what kind of transmitter you need to buy, right? So that is the problem. Right? So it has practical um, consideration. Right? Based on the based on the table, right? so J03 equals a net 0 0.26. So actually this amplitude is going down. Right? The amplitude is, is, is down, negative. But for power we only care about the square, right? The amplitude square. So the power is still positive. Right? But anyway, in the table, it's J03 equals this. <coughs> J1, J13 equals uh, 0 0.34. And J2, 3 equals uh, 49. So actually, this one is even higher than, 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 the, than, the, than, the, than the one. Mm -hmm. And J3, 3, that equals uh, 0 0.31. And J4, J4, 3, that equals 0 0.13. And the others are small, and much smaller than this 0 0.3, so I may just stop at this point. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have only 5 significant coefficients. Does that make sense? Right. So the bandwidth is approximate with the Cousins formula here, and for each frequency inside this bandwidth, the amplitude or the power is determined in this very simple situation. Eh? The baseband is just a cosine function from the Bessel function coefficient. All these coefficients are relative coefficient compared with this A. That means the real amplitude for this one is uh, 0 point, negative 0 0.26 times 10. Does this make sense? So that means at the, at the, I just, okay, I erased them. Remember the first one? The first one is the phi fm equals uh, a, is ti a times uh, some coefficient uh, cosine omega c t. So the first one will be this a times something here is just equals uh, 10 times 0 0.26. So the first amplitude is 2.6 with a negative sign. Okay. Then the next one here, m1 times some, some terms, okay. the amplitude equals uh, 0 0.34 relative compared to this 10. So the actual amplitude equals uh, 3.4 volts. 0.34 times 10, so equals 3.4. Right. And right. Multiply, multiply, multiply by this one. These all these are relative, relative with compared to one. Now we said the one equals <coughs> 10. So that this one equals 3.4. This one equals 4.9. This one equals 3.1. This one equals 1.3. The others are smaller than equal. Right. Now we need to calculate the power. So the power of P0. 
this one. Again, we assume the resistance equals one. Right? The, the resistance is, uh, is one. How to calculate the power? We discussed the end at the very beginning. The amplitude square is over 2, right? For quotient function. So A squared huh, over 2 here. Right? You don't need to write this, I'll just remind you. So A squared over 2, right? Yeah, AC circuit, we know that is A over 2, two R, right? But the method, we don't know this R, so we just assume R equals 1. If in the system you are given this R, then you just use the real R. Otherwise, you just use 1 unit. So that is A squared, M to the square over 1, uh, oh, sorry, over 2. What is A here for this one equals what? 2.6. This one multiplied. So 2.6 squared over 2. Does everybody see how we get this? Yes, right? This 2.6 is uh, obtained from, a, uh, if you like, a negative this one. Who cares? It's square, right? Right. All right, so this one equals, uh, I'll give you the result, the result equals 3.38 uh, watt. Right? What is the Q1? I ask somebody to do this. What is the Q1? Can you try? Three point four. Everybody see why is three point four? Zero point three four times ten. So that's three point four squared over two, right? Okay, that result equals eleven point fifty six. Right? And uh, what is P? You can calculate P two and P three and P four, and by the same method. What is the total power? What is the total power, Kt? Add all of them together. Yes, theoretically, yes. So P0 plus P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus P4. Yes? Like this? Or we missed something? Right now we need to think the physical meaning. What is P zero? What does that mean? That means the power of this one, right? Right? So that is, looks good. P one. What is P one? That is the power from here, right? Because we have a two. So that means this one here. What do we have a two, right? Oh, two. Uh, we have the same. P two. Right? Two. Three. Four and all others must be. Right? So the total power here equals. Uh, okay, I didn't write out all this total power, but that's trivial, right? So you can calculate some of this. Any questions on this? No, sir. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, the last point is. Uh, why we want to use the angle modulation? What's the benefit for this? Okay. That it's called a feature of angle modulation. For double segment, that's easy. Right? Easy to implement. Just use multiply. Uh, or even simple, you just use a, a diode or, and a resistor. The information is in the amplitude. If you change your amplitude, that means you change your information. For example, for AM transmission, if you have some noise inside this amplitude, for example, because of the heavy rain, a thunderstorm, the signal transmitted from the station to your receiver will change, not the original MT anymore because of the uh, oscillations, or this uh, uh, scintillation, or some uh, uh, radio wave uh, attenuation. This one will change. That means after the demodulation, this M is no longer the original M. This M is no longer the original M. 
Huh? So the noise will distort this amplitude. So that's not good. In FM, this A is constant here. How about if you still have noise that affect this one? We don't care. Why? Because the information is not near the amplitude. No matter how you change this amplitude, I don't take the baseband information from your A. Your double A, eh? you add some noise to this, the information is in the frequency or in the phase. If you do not change the frequency, which is not easy to change, then I can still get the same result. Does that make sense? You can easily change the amplitude of the sound sort of function, but you cannot easily change the phase or the frequency. So that's why, have you ever considered why you use a talk show, use AM, right? music, use FM? How about we switch? Mm -hmm. Music will be distorted. Okay, the music we want a high definition. Right? So if you have some noise, which you already applied to additive noise, as we mentioned in the uh, previous, uh, previous lecture, additive noise means add to the, to the amplitude, then you don't care. The music after the demodulation still high definition, but the talk show sometimes you hear the voice up and down, and that's totally. Right? You can still say, oh, "Okay for your talk," but not for the music. So that's why the features. Right? We have uh, derivations in here in the slide. Right? You can uh, read by yourself. But uh, engineering or right? technologies, we need to know. That's the, that's the feature. So why we want to use FM? Uh, um, for additive noise, the quality of the FM or a, uh, PM does not get worse. Right? But sometimes we need to add another bandpass filter to this. Right? Yes? What does that say? The angle modulated with? Uh, and modulated signal. The feature of angle modulated signal. Okay. Or angle modulated system. So no matter how you call this. Yeah. Right? So why won't you use this angle modulation? That's, that's the purpose. Uh, because they have a, a, a unique feature. That means the addit additive noise does not affect too much. Maybe a little bit. Uh, we can use a, easily use the bandpass filter to eliminate that problem. Okay, that's it for today. Right? Thank you. Thanks. I know that's not easy, right? Thanks for the review.